NBC's coverage of the NASCAR Pennzoil Freedom 400 is brought to you by Miller Lite. Grab a Miller Lite. It's Miller time. By Dodge. You can take life as it comes or you can grab life by the horns. Dodge. By the Home Depot, the official home improvement warehouse of NASCAR. And by McDonald's. We'd love to see you smile. New leader in the Pennzoil Freedom 400, Sterling Marlin, has just gotten around Bill Elliott, second driver to pace the event. And he made it look pretty easy coming off turn two. He got a great run on the bottom of the racetrack. Looked like Bill might have pushed off that corner. Sterling did not, just pull alongside Elliott, took the lead going in turn three. So Elliott led the first 52 laps. Now Marlin has been out in front. Watch this as Tony Stewart went up to pass Rusty Wallace for seventh. Uh-huh. Just a little nudge in that quarter panel. Excuse me, I'm coming through. Yeah, Tony was down there pretty far. Starting to see some green flag pit stops. That's Terry Labonte, bottom of the screen. He's leaving pit road. Buckshot Jones has been in. That's Buckshot leaving the pit lane. You've got Elliott Sadler and Kurt Busch also heading back out onto the track. Oh, Elliott's not wanting to give it up. He's hanging in there pretty good. Mentioned also that Jeffrey Bodine, Jerry Maydew, Brett Bodine, and Rick Mast have been on pit road under the green flag. How about old Bill Elliott going back by Sterling Marlin after Sterling didn't run him down? Yeah, it looks like Sterling is still pretty loose off the corner. This is third place. Jeff Gordon and Casey Atwood. And Atwood's going to come to pit road. Casey's heading to the entry of the pit lane, which is inside of turn number three. Got to run that ring road all the way around the inside of the corner. And now, about where the wall starts, that's where he's got to slow down and start obeying the speed limit, which is 45 miles per hour. As John Andretti comes down the pit road, Bill Weber. Well, John Andretti started well, but hasn't had the run he wanted so far. They're going to make a four-tire change, try and tighten him up. He's loose on the racetrack. Chassis adjustment made by the fuel man, so they work on the Cheerios car here on pit road. Now, one stall behind him will be Casey Atwood in the 19 car. Started outside the front row. He's been just a little bit tight, so they're making an air pressure adjustment, and they'll also make a chassis adjustment. They've been coaching him on the radio. He's shown a lot of talent. Still needs to show a little bit more desire in the opinion of Ray Evernap, four tires stop and fuel the 19 on its way. Mark Martin and Jeff Burton are on pit road. Jeff Green is on the pit lane. Here come Robert Presley, Tony Stewart, Ken Schrader, and Jason Leffler onto the pit road. Green flag stops, lap 59, Matt. And here comes Tony Stewart, the two-time winner here in Homestead. I talked to Greg Zipidelli's crew chief. Did you see the brake dust come out on Mikey Lingerfeld showing how much brakes they are using here? No chassis adjustments on the 20. It's a four-tire change. They will make an air pressure adjustment all the way around, still lacking some forward bite on the 20 car. To Bill. Well, a few laps ago, Ward Burton radioed in that this car is just all over the place. So look for a big chassis adjustment here. It's a track bar adjustment, also air pressure adjustment. Four tires for the Dodge of Ward Burton. They come around to the left side. He'll get fuel. They'll try and tighten him up, send him back out. We'll go to Matt. Andy Thurman already going to work on that right front. No adjustments to the chassis. They will make air pressure adjustments to both right side tires because Elliott says his car is tight in one and two. Loose off turn four. They didn't want to try too much more than that to over adjust. It's a great race car. He's down and away today. Matt Jimmy Spencer started 34th. He just wanted a little air pressure now out of the right rear. That's the only adjustment for him. He's climbed his way into the teens with these round of pit stops, but he's driven his way to the front as well. And Spencer is off of pit road 45 miles an hour. Bill? Well, Ricky Rudd has made it to pit road. This will be a chassis adjustment, air pressure adjustment. They're also supposed to try and put a rubber in the right front. I didn't see them do it there, but a few laps ago, Rudd radioed into the car is getting a better. So it's getting better. So they'll probably try and do it with chassis and air pressure. And it looks like they might have put one in the left front. Marty. Outstanding run again for Matt Kenseth. This will be four top tens in a row. If they can pull it off, start at 21st, up to six, a little loose off. No adjustments to Matt. The blue deuce of Rusty Walls is loose. They made a track bar wedge and air pressure adjustments. Billy Wilbur and Raleigh, Robbie Fuller are done. The two is out of here. Jeff Gordon just passed Sterling Marlin on that pit entry road coming into their stops. What a move, Marty. 
Sterling Marlin, very good on that run, Allen, especially at the end of it. A little bit tight, however, so they do a half round down on the track bar. That should loosen him up just a little bit. Four tires for Sterling Marlin to Bill. For Jeff Gordon, it is four tires and fuel and drop the right rear tire one pound. These guys racing for the championship today, that stop a little longer than they are used to. Dale Jarrett leaving the pit road. But Jeff Gordon will come 40, off pit road in front of Sterling Marlin. But Tony Stewart goes by, both of them. There goes Stewart in the orange car. Michael Waltrip is being shown as the leader. He's not yet been on pit road. And he's in now. Waltrip is on the pit lane now. There's Michael. Matt? Slugger Lab and Michael Scucci told me before the race they would go between laps 62 and 64 on their first stop. His service is complete. No adjustments to the 15. Michael is very happy with the way his race car is handling. And the lead is going to cycle around to Casey Atwood after the pit stops. Sterling Marlin stayed out on the track, took over the lead. Jeff Gordon caught him. And then they came to pit road on that entryway around the inside of turns three and four. And Gordon pulled a beautiful move. Marlin wasn't going fast enough for him. Watch this. And, and it's real important getting in and out of the pits here because that lane is fair game until you get to that spot right there where the pit lane speed starts. So that was a great move on Jeff's part. And Sterling has to stop and slow down so he can cross over and get to his pit. Saw Gordon win a race that way a few years ago at Charlotte. Remember Mike Skinner had dominated the race all day and Gordon caught him when they came to pit road and forced Mike out, beat him off the pit road and Mike could never pass him again. And normally when we show people, you know, the times on, on the in and the outs, Jeff Gordon's always one of the best guys getting in and out of pit lane. And Tony Stewart, <laughs> who started in the 22nd position, has driven his way on the green flag up to the third spot, just two and a half seconds behind Casey Atwood, the leader. Here's the leaderboard. Casey Atwood is out front, Bill Elliott is second, Stewart is third, Jeff Gordon is fourth, then Sterling Marlin fifth. Then you've got Kevin Harvick, Michael Waltrip, Matt Kenseth, Terry Labonte into the top ten, his best run in a long time by far, and Rusty Wallace. Kenny Wallace, 30 second spot. Marty, what's going on? Already starting to be a long day for the man who finished second at Rockingham last week, Alan. He was very tight on that last run. They made an air pressure adjustment, but when they came down pit road, the car fell off the jack. They lost a lot of time on pit road. I talked to Ty Norris, the president of Dale Earnhardt Incorporated, about the future of this race team. He said they are making plans in case Steve Park is not able to come back for testing in the first part of next year, and they plan to make an announcement on that in Atlanta. All right, Marty, thanks. You see Kenny running right behind Tony Stewart. A moment ago, one of the NASCAR spotters around the racetrack said he might have seen some smoke from the 20, but they've checked it out and said it looks clean, so everything's good. Here's our Mountain Dew green flag pit stop summary. And we see Jeff Gordon at 117.4. Look at Tony Stewart, 114.6. I mean, that's three seconds faster. You wonder how he got the third spot? Right there is how he did it. In lap, out lap. Did it better than anybody else. Which is getting down through the gears and getting to the start of pit lane and also getting up through the gears at, back onto the racetrack. And that's a little more complicated at this track than most because of those ring roads on the inside of the corners that you come in on and off pit road through. Well, Casey Atwood has been the subject of many, many rumors. His future in this car. Is Ray Evernham enough displeased with the way things have gone to replace him with Jeremy Mayfield. That's been the rumors. Nobody has spoken officially about it. But Casey Atwood, if he's driving for his job, he's certainly driving well. well the last three or four races, he has appeared as though he was driving for his job. Right, Bill Weber? It certainly has, Benny. Throughout the year, Ray Abraham has had conversations with Casey Atwood. He told him at Pocono that sometimes you try too hard because Casey would unload good, and throughout the day on Friday, they would get worse and worse and worse. But I had a long conversation here with Ray yesterday. He said he is committed to making Casey Atwood a success in the NASCAR Winston Cup Series, and he hopes next weekend in Atlanta to unveil his plans to further Casey's career and to exactly what will go 
on with his race team. So that's a major announcement. A lot of people looking for next weekend. But Ray underlined his enthusiasm and his support for Casey Atwood in the future. Now, I talked to Sammy Johns, the crew chief on this 19 car this morning, and asked him how his car was. And he said, we've got a good race car. As a matter of fact, I think we have a better race car today than we had at Phoenix. And I think most wow. of you fans will realize just how good he was at Phoenix. Got a new second place car. Tony Stewart has just gone around Bill Elliott and picked up the number two spot. This is earlier. Watch Stewart all the way on the apron to get around the lap car. Rick Mast. That was brave. That'll work. Worked very well. All that dust kicking up. Boy, that's slick. Well, it doesn't look like he had a whole lot of choice. He had committed himself. The 90 car may not have known he was down there below him. He's holding his breath, though. Using that apron like that. There's a lot more grip down there than you think, especially if you, his car's working really good on the bottom, so he can get away with that. There's a bunch of cars that, if they tried that, the cars would slide way up through the middle of the corner. Matt, what about the 20 car? Well, Alan, that pass was actually just a piece of cake for Tony Stewart, who regularly made it three wide at Winchester on the high banks. And when the crew asked him, was the car all right? He says, yeah, actually, I've just made a very aggressive, wasn't a pretty pass, just an aggressive pass on a lap car, and I kicked up some dust. Everything's all right with the race car. There you go. Tony is a second and a half behind leader Casey Atwood. We're just past 100 miles of the Pennzoil Freedom 400 in Homestead.